I used this little example yesterday as I was sharing in a, a, a little group of people. And um, how many people can see what that is? Carrots, amen. How many people know that uh, carrots, when you open up the packet, there's no carrots in there? How many people know that? You know, you get disappointed, it's got a big photograph of carrots on the front, and so you open up the packet and look in, there's no carrots. There's only seeds. And you know what it says? It says if you follow the instructions, you can have carrots. But if you want to do it your way, and say, well, I'm just going to leave them in the packet, guess what? You never ever get any carrots. If you say, I'm just going to throw them on this packet floor, guess what? You'll never get any carrots. But if you follow the instructions, you will get carrots. And I believe that the Bible is like a packet of seeds. It's full of promises there. And it says, if you follow the instructions, you'll get the fruit. You'll get what it said you can have. Amen? So, I'm just going to have this now. I've grouped some carrots, but I never got one seed come up. And it's got nothing to do with the seed. It's got everything to do with the soil. Okay? So I'm going to do something with the soil, and I'm going to plant again. Amen? And I'm going to believe God that we're going to see some amazing things. I want to share this morning a little bit about a guy by the name of David. How many people know David? David is a, was a champion guy, and I think that he's basically been more preached about than any other person that I know except Jesus. But David uh, was anointed as a young man, but he didn't fulfill his call till later in life. He was anointed as a very, very young man, but he never fulfilled the call of God until later on in life. Father, I'm asking you right now by your spirit that you open this word to us. Father, that we would glean from your word the truth. Because, my God, we know that it's the truth that will set us free. My God, we want to be free people. We do want that freedom of the Spirit that you came to deliver to us. You came to sanctify us. You came to set us free. You came to deliver us from the hand of the fowler. You come, my God, to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. You come as our healer, as our deliverer. You come to anoint us in a special way. Just the same as you were anointed. Because the Spirit of the Lord was upon you. And Lord, we want to know that the Spirit of God is upon us. And Father, we ask you today that you open up the Word to us. Lord, let it be life to us today in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. See, Jesus, uh, you know, when God spoke, uh, anointed David, it was for a, a particular purpose. But after uh, Samuel anointed him, he, it didn't get to his head. You know, one of our great problems today is pride, arrogance, and goodness knows what. Things go to people's head. You might get a prophecy about what God's going to do in your life. So all of a sudden now pride can get in and we get a big head. You know, big heads are not very good in the kingdom. There's a lot of them around, I've noticed. <laughs> I've had them myself from time to time. I believe that, uh, that God wants to do something special. It didn't go to his head. You, you, you know what? I've come to understand that I have got nothing to prove. You know what? That sets you free. You know, this morning as I stand here to, to preach the word to, to you folks, you've come and you've got up early, you've got dressed, you've come to church, and, and you've come for a purpose. But today, I can honestly say to you, I've got nothing to prove. I don't have to try to prove to you how much knowledge I have or how anointed I am or how this I am or how that. I've got nothing to prove. All I have to do is know that there's one that I have to love and just care for Him. Amen? Yeah. That's all I want to do today is lift up the name of Jesus and uh, see that name exalted above every name. I, I believe that I don't have to do anything but just love and please Him. If I could just do that, I, want to, I believe I've done things. So many people are trying to prove how anointed they are, how talented they are, how much knowledge they have. But really, we don't have to prove a thing. Not a thing. Not a thing. You know, Jesus more, is more interested in the church and the people in the community than we are. That came as quite a, a revelation to me one day. 
I was praying and saying, God, why don't you do this? And God, why don't you do that? And God, you know. And, and it's like God said, hey, hey, you're, you're praying like as if I'm not even interested. You're praying like as if you're trying to stir me up to do something. No, I'm trying to stir you up. I'm trying to get you in the right place where I can use you. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to get a bit of fruit around your life so that people can see the fruit and not you. You've got to get out of the road sometimes. And David was this young man that, that, uh, that you know, God anointed, but it didn't go to his head. You know, Jesus said uh, that he would open up doors. And you might have a prophecy that, that says, you know, God's going to open up a door or something like that. Hey, don't rush through that door and get slaughtered. Allow the presence of God to, to lead you and guide you and don't run off. I've seen so many people that have, have, that have had a word and they just run off with a, with, with a crazy thing and, and, and it's destroyed them. You know, I'm going to just read some scriptures here from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. And this is what it says, and the Spirit of God came and it says, How, now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel, fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his people. See, I believe that God wants to provide for himself. How many people know that God's big enough to do that? He wants to raise up people. He wants to raise you and I up. But he wants us to work within the giftings that we have. He wants us to work within the, 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 I don't want to say the confines, but, but in the realm where I'm at. And, and, and learn to grow and learn to flow with that. And, you know, as, as, he, as, as, as Samuel goes to Jesse's house, and, and the brothers start coming out and parading in front of him. And, you know, there's this first guy that came, and he would have been strong and muscly, a little bit like me when I was younger. <laughs> And, and you know, he would have had all the, all the talents and everything that Samuel was looking for. But God looked at him and he said, no, this isn't the one that I want to anoint as king. He's a great guy, but you're just looking at the outside. But I want to look at something deeper than that. I want to look at the inside. And you see, sometimes we can put on a pretty good show. We can act this and act that. But I want to tell you, God is always looking at our hearts. God wants to see the inside, the, the real you, the, the real person. And we know there that as, as, as he did this and, and as he went through all the sons there, and, and he was, Samuel would have been a little bit disappointed because there was none of the sons that were paraded in front of him that, that God said, this is the one. And so Samuel, what he said, he said, is there anybody else? Do you have anybody else? And he said, yes. He said, actually, I have another, but he is very, very young. He's just a lad, and he's minding the sheep. And of course, this young boy, he says, go and get him. I'm going to do anything until we see this young man. And as he comes in, God says, this is the one. This is the one that I want to anoint. So God anoints him. And when, when after God anointed him, then God started to move and make room for him and make a way for him. See, God, we're all anointed, but God wants to make a way for you. He, want, he wants you to move in, and, and in the direction that He wants you to go in. When we first started in ministry, we, we were in the children's church, and David and Hazel were there, and we, we saw, you know, we could talk for weeks about the children's church, couldn't we? About what we saw and, and just the you know, miraculous thing. But it's just, that's where you're at. And I thought I was going to be a children's church pastor until I, until I died. But you see, you just, you move in and you start moving and, and then God directs your path. And he opens up doors and he opens up ways for you. And, and this young fella comes in and, and, uh, and, and started to, to do things. It happened to Saul. Saul, because God rejected Saul, uh, God had to sort of get Saul out of the way. And, and actually, it was very, very sad because the Spirit, it says this, it says that the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. You know, David, David prayed the Spirit and said, Lord, whatever you do, let not thy Holy Spirit depart from me. And you know today that I just sense that churches are just walking away from the Holy Ghost. 
Uh, how many people really want more of the Holy Spirit? How many people really want more of the Holy Spirit? Why don't we just lift up our hands and say, Lord, we want more of you? We want more of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We want more of your direction. We want more of you. We don't take not your Holy Spirit from us, Lord. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. We need you so much, Holy Spirit. We need you, your direction in our life. We need you so much. And I believe that that's where it's at. You see, here I guess I can say it like this. They, uh, Jesse's sons, they were, they were strapping young men. They were, they were strong young men. And they, they would have been spending time, I suppose, building themselves up and, and learning the ways of war and different things like that. But what was David doing? He's out there with his uh, sheep or whatever he's doing. But what he was doing was he was seeking God. He, he, there was something there that, that there, was a, there was that hunger that Kendall was talking about that was in him, not for promotion in the army, not to become a captain or a general or whatever it was. He just wanted God. It was, it was just worshipping God. And, and as he was worshipping God and, and just loving on Jesus, and, and, and then because he was a lad, he would have been no different than most lads. He, he would have got his slingshot out there and, and had a few, you know, much only wax of birds or whatever else. If you're a bird lover, I'm sorry, he mostly wasn't aiming at birds at all. He was mostly aiming at twigs. Uh, something like that that happened to have a bird sitting on it. But, <laughs> but you know, he, he would have been you know, there and choo, he, was, he became skillful. You know, and while he's just loving Jesus and worshipping God and, and not really interested in anything else, and all of a sudden a, a lion comes to try to take a bear, and take one of his babies rather, one of his little lambs, and it says that he, he sprung up and grabbed it by the beard and, and slapped it a few times out of the head and killed it and took the, the land from his mouth. And he was just thinking, praise God. You know why? Because, you see, the anointing doesn't just come on somebody that's just hanging around. The anointing comes on somebody that's hungry. Somebody that wants God. Somebody that's, that wants the presence of God over your life. And, and friends, we're living in a world today where there's so much... Uh, that can take us away from God. There's so much pressure. There's so much things that are happening. But friend, can I, keep, can I say this? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't ever take your eyes off Jesus because it doesn't matter where you go then. If you just concentrate on Him, if a lion or a bear or whatever it is comes to steal from your life, Jesus will give you the anointing to overcome it. You can't fight it in your own strength. You can't fight it in your own ability. You can't fight it with your own power. Because I want to tell you that there's only one way to destroy the enemy, and that's by the anointing. Amen. The anointing breaks the yoke. David, uh, uh, you know, wasn't really known as a warrior. He was known more as a, as a keeper of the sheep. He was known more as a worshiper. But when, when Saul uh, had this, this thing that came against him, Somebody said, well, what we need is we need somebody that is skillful in music with the harp that can, that can come in. I want to tell you, friend, there's something very, very important about music. Something about God coming in on the anointing and on the, on the presence of God. And in this house here, we want to be so conscious of the presence of God. I'm believing we're going to come to the times when, when the anointing will come on the music in such a, a dynamic, dynamic way that we'll just get caught up in things and the power of God will come on people and people will be healed and delivered and set free at their feet. And as God just comes in and sweeps in and, and, and ministers life, I believe, I believe that people will bring revelation. It'll show us things that we do not know. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has revealed, that God has from any But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. See, God just let me know I'm just human too, okay? I'm just a man. But God has revealed them to us. How? Through His Spirit. Through His Spirit. But no man knows the ways of man except the spirit of man is in him. No man will ever know the, the ways of the spirit except the spirit of man. If you neglect the spirit of man, it's the spirit of God inside you, I want to tell you, you're finished. Yeah. Ministry is finished. 
Saul was a, a great man, but I tell you what, there was uh, he just gave himself over to the flesh. Destroyed himself. But David, David really wasn't known as, as a warrior. But there came a time when, when Samuel, when uh, this guy that, that God had anointed, now he takes the anointing off him. This guy now is in trouble. And they said, get somebody that's skillful with a harp and bring him. And when he plays a harp, that will quiet down this disturbing spirit. And they said, who can we get? And a guy got up there and he said, I know one in the house of Jesse. This guy is skillful with the harp. But then he goes on and says, he is a renowned warrior. Now, you've got to remember that this was a lad. He wasn't a warrior at all. I believe that he was prophesying what he could have. I can't find the seed packet. <laughs> he was prophesying what was inside of this young man that hadn't really come forth yet. You know what, can I say this? You'd be amazed what's on the inside of you that hasn't come forth yet. You'd be amazed at what's on the inside of you that still is yet to manifest itself. How many people know that what we're seeing right now is not the church that Jesus is coming back for? And man, He's coming back for a what a powerful church. A church without spot, a church without wrinkle, an amazing church. I believe it's going to be an amazing church. All these ones passed by, and it's an amazing thing. You know, the spirit departed from Saul. You know, David knew that what he had came from God. When, when, the, when the Goliath came and, and tormented the, the children of Israel, when this Goliath came forth and give me a man, and of course we know that the children of Israel, they went and hid in caves, these mighty warriors, all went and hid and did this and did that. But David comes on the scene with some bread and some cheeses and some few other things. And he hears the same voice. And all that rises up within him is how dare this uncircumcised Philistine, how dare he defy the armies of the living God? How dare he defy God? How dare he do this? And so as, as he's saying this and, and, and you know everybody's running and, and then... David says, I'll fight him. You've got to remember that Saul said to David, you can't fight him. Remember this guy said, this, this, he's a renowned warrior. He's known as a renowned warrior. He wasn't known at all. Saul didn't even know anything. He, Saul said, as a matter of fact, you can't fight him. You can't fight him because you're on your land. And this Goliath, he's been a warrior and trained. He will annihilate you. Just have a look at the size of him. You see, it's whether we look at the size of the giant or whether we look at the size of our God. Whether we look at the size of the problem or whether we look at the size of the answer that God's given to us. And so here he comes now. He says, I'll fight him. Now, the thing that separated David and Jesus from other people is that they didn't do it man's way. You know, we can, you, today it is very, very popular to try to build by, by making everybody comfortable, by doing this and by doing that. And, and, and yeah, that will, you know, that will create a crowd. But I want to tell you, it's man's way. The, it, the church that Jesus wants to build is going to build it by His Spirit. Yeah, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my Spirit, said the Lord of hosts. And so, there's got to come a bit of a change in the way we think. You see, when David said, I'll fight him, and then David started to say, the Lord who delivered me from the lion and the bear, this same Lord will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. One look at the Philistine, he was looking at his God's ability. Immediately what Saul does is says, okay, and so Saul now tries to put David in his armor. And he dresses David in Saul's armor. And, Saul, and David straps a sword to his side 
And he looks and he says, man, I can't even walk in the sand. Now, okay, David was anointed to slay the giant. Is that correct? If he would have gone out to fight the giant with Saul's armor on, with Saul's sword, he surely would have failed. If we tried to build the church with Saul's armor and Saul's sword, we will fail. Amen? We've got to do it with the giftings that God has given us. David tore off the, the Saul's armor, went down to the brook, picked up five little stones, and away he went. Now what happened here is this, that David goes out to meet the Goliath, and as he goes out to meet the Goliath, the Goliath looked at him and says, Am I a dog that they would send you? He was offended. Highly offended. I want to tell you, I think that many of us offend the devil, I mean. <laughs> Just think of that for a moment, I mean, that God sent you. <laughs> Come on, God sent you. Isn't that amazing? The devil, who him? Who is he? But you see, the secret is this. That when the Goliath challenged you, he said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And he threatened him and, you know, David just said, you might have all those things. You might have that great big sword. You might have this and you might have that. But I want to tell you, I have the advantage over you. Let me say that again. I have the advantage over you. You've got to understand that every one of us in this room have the advantage over the enemy. If you don't realize you have the advantage, you have a disadvantage. And many people are taken out by the enemy because they don't know that we have the advantage. Amen. We have the advantage over the enemy and young David, as he looked at that devil and uh, that giant, the Goliath, and he just said, you might have all that, but he said, I've got something greater. I've got something that the world can't get and the world can't take it away. I've got a relationship with a living God who came into my life and filled me with His mighty power. I have the power of God and I come not with a stick or with a sword or whatever, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Amen. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to... And he, and he trumped him with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we know that David there, as he got that stone in his sling, and as he swung it around his head, oh, shaka bundi nakasati, rabande, asoka, bang! <laughs> you know, I've heard it said many times, the giant said, such a thing has not entered my head before. <laughs> <laughs> bang! Kazam! And there he goes. But what you've got to understand is this, that David slew the giant with that stone. But he really slew it with the power of God, amen. amen. The anointing. It talks, there's a story in the Bible that talks about Ahab, who was a bad king, who was a terrible king. And, 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 he, and he conned Jehoshaphat into putting on the king's robe to go into war. He said, I'll just put on a warrior's robe. And he goes out in the war to try to disguise himself so that the enemy wouldn't go after him. They went after Jehoshaphat until they found out it was him. But they came back. They couldn't find him because he was camouflaged and hidden. But an archer put an arrow in, in his bow and he pulled it back and he just put it into the air. And that arrow came down and struck that king between his shoulder blades, between that thing. I want to tell you, God is bigger and better and stronger than anything that you and I could ever, ever imagine. But you know what, what, what amazes me is this, is that David then went over, took the giant sword. You know, can I say this? At this point, everybody's watching. The army of the, the, the Philistines are watching. 
They saw their, their Goliath hit the dirt. The children of Israel are watching from their caves and wherever they were watching. They saw the Goliath hit the dirt. They see young David running over there. They see David there. They're, no, nothing's happening. They're still watching. They're just still looking. But then David takes out the sword of Goliath and takes off the head of the Goliath. And I want to tell you this, but he took off the head of the Goliath. What that represented is he took away the authority. He took away the authority. Listen to me. He took away the authority that that devil had. He took away all the, all the, uh, the, the fear and the trepid, what trepid, what's that word? That word, that word, that word. Trepidation. Trepidation. Okay, we got it. <laughs> Everybody say it together, one, two, three. <laughs> Good. Took, him, took that away. He took all that away. Because as David picked up that head, he cut off the authority that that enemy had. And when they saw that that authority had been taken up, taken off, the enemy, the, the, the Philistines ran for the hills and the children of Israel rose up and went after them. Amen. Jesus said this, he said, I give you authority. Hey, who? Colin? Neil? See, we know each other too bad. No, I know me, you know you. I tell you what. Who? You? Yes, me. You know what? You, are, you and the Holy Ghost is a majority. You and the Holy Ghost is an advantage, amen? We have an advantage over the enemy. He's got no answer for it. He's got no, no, nothing for it. And, and as he did that, and, and they wrote, he said, I give you, Gordon, authority. I give you authority to stand on serpents. What's that? And scorpions. The spirit world. And over what? All the works of the devil. Sickness, disease, poverty, shame, whatever else it might be that is put on us. I give you power over all that. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Friend, I want to tell you, if you and I can understand the advantage that we have over sickness and disease and poverty and over the works of the devil, I want to tell you, we'd rise up in the morning, you wouldn't have to put a coat hanger in your mouth so you'd wake up with a smile. <laughs> You can, you can do it again. All authority. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. I give you that authority. That, I, I just, uh, let me just read the scripture to you. I want to read this scripture to you. Because it's amazing scripture. I don't know where it is. But just have a shot of Wendy for a minute. I've just gone past everything here. But I've got this. It's in Luke chapter 10. Is it? Have a look at Luke. Let's have a look at Luke. Luke. Say, turn to someone and say, I have an advantage over all the works of the enemy. Behold, I give you authority. Uh, this is Luke chapter uh, 10, verse 19. It starts off in verse 18. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Amen. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents, on scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. By the way, this is written in red. This is what Jesus said. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not said it? Shall he not bring it to pass? Amen. Then you can take this to the bank. If you understand who we are, nevertheless, everybody say nevertheless. Yes. Do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've got, got a lot to rejoice about. Amen. Oh, no, amen. Neil's happy. Amen. I'm, happy. I'm, I'm happy. Praise God. <laughs> I have the advantage, amen. You and I have the advantage. Demons are subject to us. Marvel not that the devils are subject to you. 
We are not subject to the devils. We are not subject to this stuff. The devils are subject to us. We have authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. But nevertheless, marvel not that the devils are subject to you. But marvel that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In heaven, hallelujah. I'm saved, glory to God. I am saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm not saved just to get by. I'm saved to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. Rule and reign with Christ. Rule and reign, my friends. When that thing comes against you, say, I have authority over you. I, I, I have something that the world can't give and the world can't take it away. I have dominion, amen. Now, we've got so much that God has given to us. We, 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 we carry the anointing. The mighty Holy Spirit dwells within us. Let Him loose, amen. The angels surround us. Ministering angels are wanting to fight and help us, amen. Don't run off where angels fear the tread. Know your place. Know who we are, amen. We're children of God, amen. I, I love it. I really, really love David as a you know, little whipper snipper of a kid. But he knew God. How many people, we've got to know God better, amen? We've got to know what God's done. We have an advantage. That's a great word, amen. I have an advantage over the devil, amen. I have an amazing advantage, but if you don't know the truth, it's a disadvantage. For the people perish. God has given us some victories. He saved us. We're delivered. We're free. But children of God, friend, you've got to understand we are joint heirs. Jesus said, these things that I do, you shall do also. Whip a few devils, amen. When the enemy comes at you, resist him. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. Let me just go over a few things. David, while he was there minding the sheep, he was playing his harp, worshipping and honouring God. Loving on Jesus. Oh, Hashem Amundi. Praising God. The Spirit of God came upon him. The anointing filled his life. It went whatever obstacle, whether it be a, a giant or a bear or a lion or, or a sickness or, or a bad manager or whatever it might be. I want to tell you the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down every stronghold that comes against you. Let me say it again. We have an advantage. 